two uh, guest speakers we have today uh dr ravijit singh and dr kiranjit singh it's our uh, welcome sir it's our privilege to have you here thank you sir uh, the re the reason for them you know we wanted to have a special edition dedicated exclusively for iris claw lens uh, among our weekly meetings and i thought there was nobody better than uh, these two people because the amount of experience they have with these lenses has been enormous it's uh, they've been using these lenses since decades and i asked them to send a, a cv and both of them did not send both of them did not send the cv so i uh, i made up my own thing i am be speaking for them here and uh, dr ravijit singh is a competency ophthalmologist and excels in cataract surgery refractive surgery and glaucoma surgery to name a few and dr kiranjit singh uh, is an excellent cataract surgeon with special interest in postipolar cataracts and uh, i'm happy to say that i've used his oval rexus technique in uh, these cataracts and it's really a nice little trick and i would advise many of you to just go and try this and he was very kind enough to show me around the hospital uh, this is the place which they work with dr daljit singh eye hospital in amritsar india last year when i visited him very kind enough to take him around and of course they have the da daunting task of uh, carrying forward the a legacy of uh, the great dr daljit singh and uh, they have been doing it with great aplomb i must say and of course both have been groomed to think uh, differently think originally uh, and uh, they had the privilege of uh, having the insight into dr daljit singh's mind who was undoubtedly one of the most uh, original thinkers and brilliant thinkers uh, among the among the, all the eye surgeons world over and the iris claw lenses were one of the these uh, this hospital and these surgeons were one of the most early proponents of uh, using iris claw lens as a treatment modality for aphakia when none of uh, the other surgeons in india were actually using it and were not even you know uh, considering it the iris claw lens have become popular over the last decade or so uh, but these we the uh, these people have been using it for ages now and they have all the a vast experience to teach us uh, and to deal with how to implant it and also how to deal with the complications if at all we have so it's indeed our pleasure to have uh, them with here and welcome you sir and uh, with this brief introduction we'll start our session we also have our host uh, faculty here in the form of dr mallikarjun hirulgi who represents the sankara eye hospital in south india they were the ones who have the maximum experience with the iris claw lenses so i thought he is an apt person to speak up uh, uh, share his experience and of course we have our uh, dear mentor dr uh, ms ravindra sir who will be sharing his few practical pearls with us so thank you for joining us all and let us start the session may i request dr mallikarjun to share his screen and start his presentation now dr mallikarjun start your uh, screen share Dr. Malikarjun, you are there. I think host has muted everyone. Is it so? No, you are audible. Okay, yeah, he's starting. Malikarjun sir, unmute yourself. Uh, is everybody hearing well? The uh, uh, yes, sir. We are able to hear. Okay, uh, Doctor Malikar. Doctor Malikarjun has to unmute himself. It's not unmuted still. Hello, Malikarjun. Yeah. Now yeah, I am yeah. audible. Yeah, yeah. Sir. Yeah, yeah. You are audible, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, actually, the journey of posterior iris crawl lens started in somewhere between 2003 and 2004 uh, 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 in our uh, group of hospitals. Uh, uh, after one of our senior consultants attended the APAO conference in somewhere in Thailand, I think so. Uh, and he, he saw a presentation on uh, fixation of the iris claw lens posteriorly. And um, he was very much impressed by the, uh, he was very much impressed by the uh, the procedure. And uh, from then we started doing all this uh, uh, iris claw lenses. And initially we had, uh, definitely we had all the inhibitions and um, we were thinking how, how to fix it posteriorly, how long it will stay. And um, uh, we didn't have actually uh, 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 the lenses uh, actually made for the eye, posterior iris claw implantation. And uh, initially, we used the artisan lenses, which was uh, made for the anterior claw lens implantation for uh, post fixation. And uh, whenever uh, after that, we learned something and started presenting in the uh, conferences and CMEs, and uh, the expectations was very low. And everyone was telling what what you are doing. You are putting the lens behind the iris, uh, and uh, it may uh, it, uh, drop down, and you are putting in a pediatric patients and. Uh, uh, the acceptance was very low, and uh, but we we had some confidence that it was going to stay and uh, uh, it it would work. And later, the Indian company uh, started manufacturing these, these lenses uh, with the uh, help of our senior consultant. And uh, initially, we uh, we had uh, we had a big big size of the lenses, but it was difficult to enclavate such lenses because when it uh, the haptic comes near the uh, angle. Yeah, it would be difficult to uh, uh, enclave it. And we made a little bit smaller size. The size became very small and it was not suitable for all the cases. And at present, we are stick to this lens, this type of lenses. And it is overall length is 8 mm and 5.5 is the optic size. Uh, Dr. Deepak asked me how many numbers we have done. But uh, uh, if, I, uh, find, if yeah, I try to find out, it, it was a very huge number, but uh, I don't want to tell this because I can say, uh, I can see we are one of the biggest users in uh, India. Uh, I cannot say we are the highest user. There are masters are there already here, <laughs> but I can say we are one of the highest users in India. And nowadays, almost all surgeons use the iris claw lenses. And there is, we are not, we have stopped doing uh, almost uh, all the other type of second rival. And very few surgeons who are not trained in iris claw lenses and which they join in our group, they are doing uh, other type of iris claw lenses. Initially, we had uh, some surgical, uh, I can say some, uh, uh, our experience in uh, uh, surgery. And initially what happened, uh, we used to implant the uh, iris claw lens, putting it whole eye, uh, lens behind the iris and enclavating it one side and changing the hands and enclavating other side. And that that uh, we uh, and uh, it was not so easy for us to do such uh, that type of procedure, and uh, we we, uh, we had some difficulty. Then we learned from our uh, mistake, and what we started we started enclavating it one side first, then uh, other side would be on the uh, plane and enclavating it other side. Uh, that made this procedure very easy, and. Uh, uh, and uh, talking about whether should we do PI or no PI. First, initially we used to do PI in all all our patients, and uh, you know, and afterwards we stopped doing PI, thinking that there is a, some space behind the iris and the lens, uh, which would allow the aqueous to flow, and uh, uh, it would not lead any problems. But some patients they came with uh, pupillar fog after some time. Now we do PI in all cases. Uh, advantages of uh, this iris uh, posterior iris claw uh, fixation of eye it's a very minimal uh, learning curve is there and only you don't need extra instrumentation extra uh, flap creation uh, all the other sophisticated um, uh, instrument we need only extra uh, one iris holding forceps and the modified simski hook and uh, we are not seen glaucoma much glaucoma by the uh, iris claw lens uh, post I mean, post fixes at eye balance, no UGI syndrome, no chronic UITs, no corneal decompensation. 
and late discussion uh, dislocation for surprisingly i have not seen uh, my personal experience but i don't know whether in some uh, centers of our hospital they have seen but my uh, personal experience i have not seen any late dislocation of this lens and i have a personal long uh, longest follow up of 14 years of this lens post fixated ios uh indications if you think surgical aphasia where there is no uh, pc support traumatic cataract maybe in adult and pediatric cataract when there is a you no know, pc support subluxation lenses in pediatric as well as in uh, adult patients nucleus drop i will drop in uh, some other tricky situations like uh, coloboma iris and uh, also we have implanted in the keratoplasty uh, uh, like a pkp uh, along with iris claw lenses maybe as a primary procedure or a secondary procedure and uh, we are also uh, implant in uh, patients with previous icc where there is a superior si and uh, some uh, some other tricky situation like uh, patients who has a icc with very small elder dialysis and uh, still we can fix, fix this iris claw lens posteriorly uh, what i say to the my uh, people uh, my students around you, you don't in such situation you don't need to need to do pi and it is work and a complication what you have seen and if you see the complications are very few uh, i am not exaggerating very few beginners will have some uh, beginners will had uh, some complications like i will drop and one side enclavation and other side drop this uh, this this problem used to happen when we are implanting the lens uh, when when you used to implant the whole lens uh, behind the iris and enclave both side and uh, sometimes uh, we are seen decentered i will Uh, this used to be uh, the older technique when uh, we are doing that, and uh, oilization of pupil is uh, common in inexperienced surgeons, but it does not affect on the vision. And pigments on the eye wall, uh, especially in traumatic cataract, uh, does happen, but it, it does not lead to any glaucoma. And uh, CME is the one thing we have to uh, consider. It depends on the indication of surgery. If it is a planned surgery. and uh, planned uh, posterior iris claw lens, uh, lenses it is as good as a normal cataract surgery but slightly high in traumatic nucleus drop uh, and in uh, iol drop or u at cataract and in uh, i think regular iols also if you place in the in the back lens also it will be cme will be there in such cases and in such cases you have to treat the cme and also give, give uh, i mean you have to give a prophylactic uh, treatment and also look for the cme post operatively and our view of cases we had our uh, retinal detachment and uh, compared to the whole number of the surgeries the incidence of rd is negligible and uh, few people may uh, some uh, people may be thinking who who start uh, this, who, who want to start this iris claw lenses uh, whether i am doing uh, ethically or is it illegal or is it a negligence or uh, and there are so many peer reviewed uh, articles have been published in the literature these are some of the uh, publications from our group uh, 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 this is from a guntu retrofixation of iris claw lens in uh, uh, in uh, Uh, we visual rehabilitation of fake eyes and uh, retrofix pupillar fixated identical lens pediatric in a pediatric subluxated lenses and uh, after a parsonal vitrectomy uh, in a nucleus drop and uh, uh, i will drop i am not going to i am not going in detail because uh, uh, time doesn't allow me and some more publications we are implanted in uh, uh, pediatric patients and pediatric traumatic pa traumatic patients and also we have compared the iris claw lenses posterior iris claw lenses versus the uh, <coughs> regular lenses in a pediatric quarter but we found in all these uh, studies we found uh, this iris posterior iris claw lens um, uh, would be better than other type of uh, uh, second driver and one more important uh, 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 one doubt comes to everybody's mind where in the beginners whether pupil will dilate after the posterior iris claw lens uh, uh, fixation of iris definitely pupil will dilate you can do a vr surgery you can do a laser you can do whatever you want to do in the posterior segment and see uh, this is how <coughs> this is how you can achieve this posterior iris claw lens and uh, this picture shows there is a uh, you can see the haptic coming outside and uh, we should not intend for this but still this is if it comes out it is a good enclavation because there are a lot of uh, good amount of tissue has gone inside the uh, uh, haptic and it is a uh, we consider it as a good enclavation also and this is how we, we try to achieve uh, this is how we, we
we have to, uh, so people visualization is a common problem but it doesn't uh, affect on the vision unless unless the uh, iris um, i mean i will comes out of the pupil or something and uh, we have done implanted in uh, during a uh, pkp as a primary procedure and later procedures uh, posterior iris closure lenses and this is a traumatic cataract is uh, where we, we where there will not be any posterior uh, pc support uh, this iris lens would be a very good choice and this is the one uh, one case where uh, this is afaphic glaucoma where we have implanted a wall here we can see the tube here and iris claw lens and uh, coloboma iris uh, here the pupil is dilated the, to show the iris claw lens here and this is the case with the previous icc superior si iris claw lens has been implanted and uh, this issue won't come if there is a, this uh, pupillary uh, aphakia uh, pseudo uh, pseudo issue won't come because uh, the, the this this part would be uh, covered by the upper lid and this is a small video uh, to show how to implant so first you have to implant the whole eyeball on the iris and uh, and you have to uh, 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 place it in the correct position where we, where you would like to same uh, uh, implant it posteriorly so uh, here you see uh, then we have to mentally imagine where exactly you have to enclave it and uh, i have made a two para, uh, paracentesis here then with the help of uh, posterior iris place it one side behind the iris and a modified uh, simsky hook feel the depression there and just a small downward movement you can tuck the iris claw lens and uh, form the ac and other size again it is placed behind the iris and it is tucked to the iris actually that's it uh, to conclude if you have learned this procedure and uh, you are you are doing any complicated surgery and any you have a intraoperative uh, uh, problem and um, don't lens in your uh, thank you dr malik arjun uh, for the excellent presentation and sharing your experience may i request dr kiranjit sir to just uh, start sharing his screen and begin his presentation i would request all the uh, delegates who are attending this please note down or write down the questions in the chat box so that uh, we'll have a discussion at the end so most of the questions would be uh, uh, answered during the presentation but you still something more we can always discuss them at the end so please do that dr kiran ji sir you can malika ji need to stop sharing your screen dr malika ji need to short uh, stop your screen screen share Kiranjit Singh sir, I uh, am not audible. You are not audible. Unmute yourself. Is it fine now? Yeah, you're fine. So I'm going to talk of iris claw, uh, and my favorite is uh, anterior iris claw fixation. So my slide is not moving. sir there will be one arrow mark on the screen you can try sir Thank you. 
तो जा रही है कर दे इसमें कर दे चले जाना हम्म हां सो इट शुड मूव नाउ सो फर्स्टली लिटरेस बाय डॉक्टर सिंह वाज हैड अ क्लॉज स्लाइटली placed upwards and according to me that was the cause of pseudo phacodenesis and which caused uh, uh, endothelial cell decomposition in 10 10 percent of cases but uh, looking at the number of cases he did uh, around one uh, 150000 cases he did alone and uh, the patients with problems that went very high so 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 i had the uh, as far as i am concerned i have been using small so i back the patient came and his endothelial count was 2200 and after prk his uncorrected vision was 6 by 6 uh, so that led me to think that it is not because of the iris claw lens uh, that we had corneal problems it was because of the wrong placement of the claws so initially when page patients used to come to me with some corneal problems i was instructed to do a, a pkp uh, with the exchange smaller version and the patient started doing very well but the problem is after some time the patient stop using steroids and they come back to you with uh, rejection so then i uh, stopped doing keratoplasty and uh, the trend of dsec had not started yet so i just used to exchange the lens lenses from bigger lenses i used to put a smaller lens and within few months the cornea used to clear up so that gave me a lot of confidence so this is the first case um, i exchanged the lens with a smaller version I put the patient on glycerin and hypersol ointment and the patient remained Uh, with six six vision for the next four five years later on uh, he had a corneal decomposition then i sent the patient to dr fogla for dsec and uh, 10 minutes before the operation i asked him what are you going to what is your game plan so he said i am going to take out this uh, iris claw lens and put a uh, suture scleral uh, sutured lens so i requested him not to do anything just do a dsec and uh, this patient has uh, had got this dsec done i think around 10 years back and he is stable with 66 vision till date so amount of iris you are enclaving in the claws that is very important if you are enclaving it anteriorly and uh, that will uh, have more stability and you should have uh, many uh, uh, many sizes of iris claw lenses available in your ot not just the one design design so the previous speaker was talking about ovalization ovalization occurs when you are putting a bigger lens and when you are trying to enclave the iris it is the iris medial to the claw which gets stuck into the claw that is the cause of uh, uh, ovalization so how to avoid ovalization you should you should have smaller lenses with you in the ot then this thing will not happen so i am going to show you some scenarios scenarios where iris claw lens has bailed me out like anything so the patient came, comes to me with a endothelial count of 500 with secondary glaucoma due to pupil block due to pupil block because of angle supported lens what i do i do a yag laser pi and post the patient for a lens exchange so this is after i have exchanged the lens did a pi and did a bit of anterior vitrectomy and uh, um, after a month or so i sent the patient uh, to my friend dr vikas mithal for dsec and the patient comes back with this uh, i think it's the slide is not in my control little bit uh,
so he comes with this okay we can leave it so this is a anterior fixation in a child in which vitrectomy lensectomy has been done and how i do the anterior fixation is firstly i have a forceps with a longer limb the the limb of the vertical forceps below should be longer than the upper one and you hold the of the shaft of the trap then comes microcorneas this patient was referred to from other hospital because the surgeon could not implant the lens in the capsular bag, bag because the capsular bag was very small so he just uh, uh, enlarged the incision and sent back the patient to me so after a month or so i did a, a very small sized iris claw lens implantation and uh, you can see that horizontal line up there that is the line from where he implant explanted the lens the previous surgeon and from that you can imagine the size of this eye and now the child is in the cricket team of the uh, school because of this so this girl comes to me, uh, me with a spectacle number of plus 20 diopters and there is vitreous in the pupillary area there is vitreous in the anterior chamber there is vitreous in the wound this is how it looks so i just did a anterior vitrectomy and removed the vitreous from everywhere and put a lens very small in size to the, next to the pupillary edge and look at the smile on child's face this again is a case of uh, colobuma microcornea and secondary implantation the power of the lens which was put was 42 diopters and the patient had a uh, 618 vision thereafter so this is a case of microcornea colobuma and black cataract so i had to cut open the iris from the superior side and then implant the iris claw behind the iris so this patient comes with uh, to me with a painful a painful eye because of the posteriorly vaulted acil uh, and look at the size difference between the angle supported lens and the iris claw lens so i exchanged the lens did a little bit of vitrectomy and the membranectomy which developed because of the angle supported lens and the patient did not have any tenderness or pain after that so this is a megalocornea you see uh, the lens iris claw lens holds the eye with the uh, by getting clipped to the iris i is more in a this is a cornea heel corneal ulcer with a cataract so what we do is we simply do a extra cap surgery and uh, implant the lens behind the iris so so then then we come to pseudo exfoliation cases so i have done the phaco and i can see the capsular bag is not fit for pcil implantation it is not sensible to keep this type of bag in the uh, eye and put those segments and ctrs and rings sioni rings and drill holes in the ciliary body and uh, try to fix them to the sclera just take out the capsular bag with a non tooth forceps and you won't be disturbing the anterior vitreous space also after you are done with this you can remove the hooks and then it is your it is your discretion whether you are going to implant the lens on the iris or below the iris done by me transplanting a retrofixation lens for the beginners is that you should pass a suture through one of the claws and then you should try to do in uh, in the initially first two cases so the it will give you confidence that that the lens is not going to fall down in case it does fall you can always pull it pull it up with a suture so you uh, you have to do a iridectomy that is a must so this is this is what i do i do anterior fixation and bigger chunks of iris i put in the claw so this is a girl uh, whom we implanted an pcil with 55 diopters uh, power 
and after we had done that she again came with a refractive power of uh, five diopters she was she was a high, high hypermetrop so we implanted a, a lens to the back of the iris and she, ultimately she became uh, emetropic 624 vision and got happily married after that so this is a patient who taught me so much uh, his patient was prolapsed and the doctor just cut the vitreous with a scissors and put a angle spotted lens in the eye so he came to me with a, a nearly decompensated cornea so what i did was i planted the lens it vitrected me and i put a iris claw lens in his eye so he did not show up for the next 3 4 months so so meanwhile he went to another doctor in the city so he told him all your pro- so before that uh, i was giving him glycerin drops hypersol drops and he was having 6 9 vision with a very um, poor endothelial cell count and he went to the doctor he said all your problems are because of this iris claw lens so i am going to remove this iris claw lens he was a very very nice patient he said go ahead so he took out the iris claw lens and in doing so he pulled out a lot of vitreous and uh, invited lot of iris into the wound so from there on he went to another vr doctor he said go to a, 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 a keratoplasty surgeon so he sent the patient to dr vikas mittal he who's in ambala so he said uh, i can try something on you but you have to go back to dr kiranjit singh who will implant a iris claw lens so that i can put some air for the tamponade uh, but there was there were a lot of synechias and vitreous so he um, he, uh, he rang me up dr vikas mittal he said i think he, it's a very hopeless case and even if you try to break those synechias try to uh, put a um, rs claw again and those synechias are going to form again so oh, i said don't worry you send the patient cross to me so what i did was i put the claw in the direction of the synechias did vitrect me uh, separated the synechias and put all those that area class metal for i think his seventh surgery and his dissect was done and he is maintaining maintaining 636 vision so this patient taught me so much that i invite i innovated a device so and I, i i applied that device on this patient so this is a girl 22 years of age and she comes to me um, and she says we have been to all hospitals and uh, everybody has said you, nothing can be done about your eye and her iop was around 37 with all anti glaucoma drugs with diamox and occasional manitol and it, there was a synechial angle closure and i am not a basically a, cataract, a glaucoma surgeon but i was working on the device after uh, the previous patient's uh, or adventure so i told him okay i'll do something for you so what i did was i uh, gave the main incision multiple claws multiple stabs in the uh, limbal limbal area and under visco i try to separate the synechias i think this is not the right way of doing it one should do a, a gonios a gonioscopy one should see pupil uh, small and she was suffering for from this uh, glaucoma for the last one and a half years she was roaming around with a tension of 40 45 and this is the device i made made and this is nothing but a ring with five claws and i forcibly put the peripheral iris into these claws at five different places now when i'm going to uh, transfix the third claw you see that black spot that will that will move inwards to give you a proof that something is moving towards the pupillary area so this the hidden this pi also moves in so i'm able to pull the iris and after doing see after doing this i did her second eye also and she was a, a steroid responded a responder 
and she had already got a cataract surgery done and glaucoma surgery done for uh, steroid induced cataract and glaucoma and after one and a half years she is 13 uh, getting patented in india so i have done around 12 cases more of similar cases and all are below 20 some are with medicine and some are without medicines and all were between you know, 35 and 45 and all were hopeless cases and i did mercy surgery on them so uh, this is the even this is the second device um, we are get, getting getting patented in a few months time and this patient comes to me with a very long uh, scleral tear repaired elsewhere and you see the that iris is missing so what i do i have got a uh, this device made colored iris segment simply fix behind the iris and patient will not have any photophobia after the surgery this is a similar case i am going to show you so this is a patient with nail injury so i am doing his faco but the iris on the opposite side side is missing and is a young guy driving motorcycle and he is going to have glare and photophobia a lot of it so so and he had because of injury he had a, a cylindrical error of six diopters so i had especially got a, a toric lens made for him and uh, when i am through the cataract extraction this toric lens and if ultimately uh, he got emetropia because of this uh, toric lens but because of the uh, rs missing and uh, missing in that area he would definitely have had uh, photophobia so the toric lens is dialed in the plane desired plane and after constricting the pupil so uh, in future we are going to design it design it in a better way and have colors of uh, different law and same is done on the other side so these are the claim and forceps and these are favorite of dr ravijit so i have even i have started using them using them so the patient comes back to me 2 hours after surgery and i send him to the refraction room Uh, his vision is uncorrected six by six, and I take him out in the sun. He doesn't have any photophobia. I think that is all for today. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kiranjit Singh. I think that was a very enlightening uh, uh, presentation. We came to know about so many things which uh, we were not aware of. I am sure we're going to have a lot of questions. Uh, at least I have a lot of questions. uh may i go to the next presentation may i request dr ms ravindra to start his screen share sir uh, dr kiran ji sir you stop and ravind ji from staying with them for a couple of uh, days and had free entry to their operation theater and it was amazing uh, experience that's the time i picked up not only the iris claw lenses but uh, everything about um, so many aspects of ophthalmology and uh, in addition to that uh, you know how one should lead a life uh you know in a, a very satisfactory way they're all uh, all of them everybody is in their house now they that's extremely lot of uh, innovative work and uh, i'm so glad that they have come to karnataka to deliver this i'll uh, brief uh, as to what exactly i do hope i can uh, i'm visible and uh, my video can be seen it's okay man there directly with the 2.8 keratom uh, did a rexis enlarged it Uh, this patient had uh, you know, large zonular dehiscence, and uh, the entire cataract capsular bag was removed, and we had intact hyaluronal face, and I all kinds of iris claw lenses are available ready, and I just our my laser is exactly perpendicular to this area. Wherever this is the temporal cornea, and uh, this is uh, exactly 90 degrees away, 
when I enter the uh, uh, the limbus here, I start in the peripheral limbus or even in anterior sclera. Uh, from the tunnel, introduce a cannula to enclavate it. There is no corneal folds here, so visibility will be very good. It's a very short tunnel made after about 23 gauge sharp uh, keratome. And uh, if I, this was not planned for uh, the iris claw lens, this is a little longer. But if I'm planning for an iris claw lens, this tunnel also is going to be about five five point. Take I have not done a I have not taken a vitrectomy, so I am supporting behind with a. Um, you know, dial, the, the dialer and I'm perforating it with a 23 gauge needle that forms an adequate size and the pupil is, the hole is dilated there. This step is very important. Once I had uh, one portion, you don't have to pass your uh, cannula there, just move it, see under microscope if that moves. That means the slit is intact. So now uh, I'm, when you hold the IOL, do not coat with viscoelastic. If you coat with viscoelastic, it's a very slippery lens. And I put a lot of people, the larger or little smaller than normal people is all right. Don't put pilocarp in initially and then uh, hunt for all those things. Keep the lens ready and uh, then you put pilocarp in. The moment it reaches here, it should not constrict too much. If it constricts too much, then you'll have difficulty in passing it behind it. So about four millimeter, this is probably about Three minutes ideal, and that's how to put it there so it doesn't exactly there. Form the chamber. The moment you take a fast steps, there is some amount of visco is going to come out, so you have to be absolutely quick, ready with your. Uh, this is the uh, for the fast steps. I like it. I'll show you later. As uh, Kiran said, pull it there and come to the top of it. So where I hold it, I don't hold the center. I don't have a control. So I hold it somewhere on the left side and right side. This part, I hold it at that point. The exact point I hold. See, as you can see, the I, the forceps is separated by the thickness of the lens. And now it's, you know, you can see they are equally, uh, you know, tip. There is no elongation of the lower one. So now quickly go below, below it. There's some shallow that there will help you exactly where you have to go inside. You should not cast a dismet. So you can push, put this first and then put the lens and then the haptic can be seen through the iris when you lift it up. You are not only taking it behind, after it goes behind, just lift it up, elevating the iris by a few, you know, less than a millimeter. Then you can see the enclave. And it's a very quick surgery, as you can see. Inject viscoelastic. Now, here I'm going to struggle because this is a cannula which is a little longer. That's going to touch my lid because it's 12, it's 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. It's going to touch. You see? Uh, what I'm doing now, I've gone there. See, this is touching the lid. It's difficult to angulate it and go inside. See, now it's difficult. Now, I have shifted over to another. This irrigation aspiration is absolutely important. You're not involved in the vitreous. You're not involved in the ciliary body zone. It's a quick surgery. And uh, uh, that's the end of uh, your uh, surgery. Remove the, all the viscoelastic and that's it. Form the chamber. There's no need to. Band is not to hydrate the one because I hope no. So I'll quickly in a, in a minute. This time I'll run through the slides. This is uh, time tested, it's been used by Dr. Daljit Singh. Uh, you know, I'll give the credit for him for introducing here and uh. Lens and this is a contractomy done. Eye is going to be hypotonic, so you'll have to have positive pressure inside the eye. Many times it's created by the infusion through an AC maintainer. If you don't vitrectomy, the other one also, the pass plane entry also can be done. Inject dispersive in the anterior chamber. And when I soft shell technique, the more you press on the tunnel floor, more viscoelastic, and you'll be actually quick in doing it. Haptic contour shows through the iris and the enclave with 26, 27 gauge candle. Initially, I tried to enclave it as standard. They were taught with iris hooks. Iris hooks, uh, I've uh, tried to do that, but iris hooks damages the iris there. So, what I've done is have 
these are the various form of, uh, the uh, forceps available. That's the forceps I'm going to use. This looks like Alice McPherson's forceps, but the angulation is not anteriorly. Angulation is to a side. This is my favorite one. I call it as Daljit Singh forceps. I do not know whether he has invented it or he has used it. It's called by that name. So, uh, this is important. Many times, the market it's, uh, has been useful to everyone. And I'm very keen to learn about what Ravi has to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ravindra. It's, it's a pleasure listening to your comments uh, on iElite. You're so, so knowledgeable about everything. Uh, and Dr. Meghur, it's, it's again a pleasure uh, looking at your videos that you have created. They are masterpieces. Thank you for sharing all your videos with us. Okay, um, so I'm going to share my screen. I have, my presentation is in three parts. And, and also I have to thank Dr. Malik Arjun. He's done a good job uh, of his presentation and he has done my work uh, very easy because he has shown quite a few things that I had to show. Yes, is, is, is a video on uh, my technique of uh, implanting the Aristotle lens. I have, I have been amongst the Aristotle lens since uh, 1976 or 77. And this is the claw of the lens in, in high magnification. And these are the different sizes of the lenses which are available with us in our roti from large to medium to small and even smaller ones. And these are the right and left claimant forceps that I'm very fond of using for uh, retrofixation of the iris claw lens. As uh, uh, Dr. Ravindra mentioned, we need to, to uh, we need to check for the beginning of to know how the claw. Take a few lenses, no problem. At least you'll have no problem while you're operating and implanting these lenses. Another thing that I'm just about to tell you is that once the claw goes back, as Dr. Uh, Ravindra mentioned, it is difficult to find where the claw is. So if you hold with this with this forceps, the, the right angle of the forceps points towards the claw. So even if the claw is hiding behind the iris, uh, you, can, you can find the place where, where you have to enclave it. This is one of the older uh, lenses in, which had been implanted entirely about 25 years ago. Uh, it has uh, sadly subluxated. So I'm going to explant this and exchange this with a uh, retro ICL and I've made one paracentesis on the right and three on the left. The reason why I've made three on the left is so that I can do a perfect centration of the lens. First I fix the right claw and then I let the left claw rest on the iris and then I, then I see which of three paracentesis will lead to perfect centration of the lens and then I use one of those three. If you use uh, a paracentesis which is away from the, the claw, you end up creating a lot of folds in the cornea and it becomes difficult to visualize. So the first incision is 2.8 millimeter, which is increased to five. The lens is explanted, limited anterior vitrectomy with a 23 gauge uh, cutter. Pupil is constricted. And an iris claw lens is introduced into the anterior chamber. Just as uh, Dr. Malik Arjun mentioned, it has to mirror the placement of the lens has to mirror its final implantation behind the iris. And the, the right claw must rest just next to the paracentesis opening on the right side.
so the right sided claven forceps and this is the half half inch long 27 gauge cannula it is important to use a small cannula which is small and rigid rather than a long one because long one causes a whiplash this does not it is rigid and it's easy to maneuver it so go inside catch the optic from the center with the right angle of the the forceps pointing towards the the cut in the claw position the lens at the back you can see that the cannula is perfectly in line with the forceps and gradually slowly push the iris back one push and you can do another push you can see that the the pmm of the lens is is showing a little bit in the front so trans iris fixation has taken place this means this lens can never subluxate in a person's lifetime so once the the right uh, claw enclavation has taken place now i make sure that i pass the cannula through the paracentesis which is right opposite to the claw on the left side if i use the wrong paracentesis it causes lot many folds in the the cornea and makes visibility difficult again stabilize the lens with the right hand and make two passes with the 27 gauge forceps and there you are done the lens is perfectly centered this cola you will get in a so if you have any questions i can probably take them at the end now i come to my presentation so uh this lens has completed four decades and in, in all these four decades the fundamentals and the these lenses and this is what used to result after 10 or 15 years of implantation so the obvious answer to this problem was to go on the back of the iris so so all of you have seen this pictures now so i'm going to show you the versatility of the iris claw lens fixed on the on the back of the iris this is a patient of microspherophakia i'm going to run through this videos do a anterior cap slot me aspirate the the lens and implant a retro fixated icl on the back of the iris that's it i don't use this because with this i lose the bearing of where the claw is so one side other side and you're done uh this is secondary implantation in a patient of aphakia post lensectomy in marfan syndrome pupillus constricted basically it's a repetition claimants forceps we fix one side and we fix the other side and you're done this is post op after 24 hours a patient the traumatic subluxation lens uh, the can um, posted for faco but the lens was too loose so i did an intra cap right there on the table and after intra cap large uh, of course large <laughs> and then implanted a retro icl there and then nothing special it's a routine retrofixation that you've all seen this is the patient next day lens absolutely centered in the pupil and these are the end points of enclavation congenital subluxated lens again uh, anterior cap slot me
then plantar remove from the anterior side. You can do a partial lunar vitrectomy, and partial lunar lumpectomy and retrofixation on the on the VR table only. This is a secondary implant after silicon oil removal. So the patient had undergone silicon oil surgery. Silicon oil removal and retrofixation of the aristotel lens were done in the same sitting. Again, the ideal fixation endpoint of the iris pinch. The other side. Now this is uh, the trans iris fixation that we just saw and we were talking about. This means that the lens is fixed perfectly and it will never subluxate. This is a child with traumatic cataract in which cataract was removed and retro ICL was implanted. Uh, uh, this is a patient with megalocornia or megophthalmos in which uh, the retro fixated iris claw was implanted. And the study has been done in which they found that implanting a retrofixated lens is much better or much easier than doing uh, scleral fixated lenses. But there was no space for iris claw lens. Did membranectomy and anterior vitrectomy. The patient's grandmother and father had already been operated by us. For, for similar problems in 1988 and 1989. This is the small lens. It is four millimeters by two and a half millimeters. Process of implantation is just the same. So uh, the implantation is completed. Now look at the difference in the size of a normal lens and an ultra small lens. Uh, this is a retrofixated IUL, uh, which was implanted during uh, PKP. You can see the transfixated uh, haptic on the right side. Duplex effects you've already seen. So complications when when somebody asks me what are the complications of retro iris fixated. Iris claw lens, you know, I start thinking apart from occasional once in a long time subluxation of the lens, one side, uh, I fail to remember any much sig significant uh, complication. Overling of the pupil is not a big complication. Transient inflammation, a transient IOP spike, and CME, considering the morbidity of the patient of the eyes that we are implanting uh, or doing implantation of such uh, lenses in those eyes. Okay, and now I'm coming to my third and So this lens was born in 1975, way ahead of its time, much before the birth of modern cataract surgery. At that time, there were no viscose, no magnification, no vitrectomy, no tools, no endothel end understanding of the endothelium, and the journey was rough and turbulent. Uh, we have talked about the Singworst lens, especially the lens designed by Oftech. It was a huge size lens, which was very difficult to implant. And they advocated peripheral iris, iris support, which we totally denounce. We should do mid peripheral iris support rather than peripheral iris support. So this is the same worst lens. You've already seen that. Long-term problems with the older lenses were lens dislocation, pseudophacodonesis, and pseudophacic bullous keratopathy, and inflammation, which was I think arising out of the sterilization problems because we were sterilizing the lenses with sodium hydroxide. Even Oftec was supplying lenses sterilized in sodium hydroxide, and you had to uh, you had to neutralize that with uh, a weak basic a weak acidic solution. But I guess some some of the hydroxide remained stuck to the lens. So 
as developments in cataract surgery techniques and technology um, progressed, magnifications came, viscoelastic came, irrigation solutions, FECO, and most importantly, PCIULs. The design and technique modifications continued with the ICLs, whereas nobody was doing uh, because this lens was actually designed to be implanted on the interior surface. Nobody was doing uh, implantation of the backside. So gradually, the implantation shifted to the reverse. Rather than implant, rather than enclavating a, a very thin sliver of the iris, a chunky iris tissue started to be enclaved in, in, in the claw for a more secure fixation. Some people have preference for uh, uh, anterior fixation and some prefer retrofixation. Uh, our anterior fixation should be done only with very small size lenses as Dr. Kiranjit Singh has mentioned. So these are the different sizes of lenses. Now advantages of scleral fixated lenses. Advantage is being in the posterior chamber and maybe not touching the iris. Rest I think are all disadvantages because a lot of maneuvering of the lens in the eye, making holes in the sclera, sutures, knots, glue, ciliary body, a prolonged procedure, possibility, greater possibility of retinal complications. And as they say, out of sight, uh, you, you can't see what is happening at the, at the back. So you think uh, things may be okay, but they may not be. With the retrofixated iris claw lens, I find it hard to find disadvantages. Uh, yes, it, there's an advantage it is in the posterior chamber. It's, the advantage is it's a uniplanar procedure. You don't have to turn around the lens in the anterior vitreous, which is so close to the vitreous space and can cause uh, retinal problems. The technique is very easy. The technique is very quick. There is no burrowing into the sclera, no messy sutures or knots, less intraoperative injury to the eye and less predisposition for retinal problems. Yes, there would be some people who would have a problem uh, about the, the iris hug that the lens gives on the uh, back of the iris, but, but that's what the strength of this lens is. Now there is, has been a review of, uh, I've done a review of uh, people who who have done a lot of work on iris claw lens. You can find this all over uh, the PubMed. Uh, but I would uh, like to, to mention one, and this is a, a study done by Dr. Srignesh, a very own Dr. Srignesh. Long-term clinical and visual outcomes of retrofixated iris claw lenses in complicated cases. And his conclusion is that the visual outcome with retrofixated iris claw lenses when combined with other intraocular procedures is mainly affected by the complexity of coexisting pathologies. The complications are more related to the combined procedures performed rather than retrofixation of the lens implantation alone. So it is a sum total of the situation, of the clinical situation and the, the lens being implanted because generally we implant these lenses in patients in eyes which, are, which have challenging situations. So uh, I would start to wind up by saying that iris claw lens is a fighter. It has stood the test of time. There would be very few things which uh, you can count on your fingertips, which has, which has survived for the last 40 years. Not our radios, not our televisions, um, not our telephones, nothing. But this design, which was designed in, in, in mid seventies is still the same design as it was in the beginning. So the Iris Claw lens is not difficult to implant, it is just different. 
the lens is not meant to be implanted in every patient. I would not recommend you to implant this in, in a patient in which a lens is, uh, in the bag implantation is uh, possible. Make your choice based on the clinical situation and learning a new skill is never harmful. Develop your independent opinion and no company is going to guide you in this matter. You have to learn all by yourself and introduce this into your OT. One thing I must say, skepticism rules. Talks uh, we have all have ever heard for a long, long time. Thank you so much for sharing your wealth of experience as well. So we'll be asking a few basic questions and as well as uh, a little bit more complex one. Uh, let me begin the question with first with you now, Dr. Ravi. Uh, do you use the uh, Clement forceps, the right and left separate for uh, enclaving the right haptic and the left haptic? Yes, uh, I use for, for the right haptic. And especially in an eye which is victimized, it's already is hypotonus, the visibility is a problem. But we never saw anything of that in your videos. Now, do you uh, just share some of your tricks like how to avoid these uh, corneal folds and uh, collapse of the chamber? in an vitrectomized eye. Is, uh, a few things Dr. Ravindra also mentioned. You have, you have to tiptoe inside the eye. You should not press on the posterior lip of the incision uh, with your forceps. The claim in forceps is very, very slim as opposed to the other forceps. Now the vertical forceps which Dr. Ravindra was using, uh, when it opens, it opens quite a bit and there's a fish mouthing of the, of the incision. Whereas with the claim in forceps, it does not fish mouth that much. The other, the other thing that I already told you is, uh, the other thing which I already told you is that the enclaving cannula should be in line with the cut. If it is slightly up or down, you are going to bend the cornea and create folds. Third thing, the enclaving cannula should not be long, longer than four, and, and you will not, not have, have any folds, and you will not have any problem. Slightly dimbling here. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, this. Uh, Pseudophacodonosis. We often see pseudophacodonosis uh, uh, in these iris claw lenses. Uh, is it surgeon dependent or is this eye dependent? And is there any trick to prevent this excessive pseudophacodonosis? Uh, actually, actually, if you but it does not disturb the patient. So, if there is some amount of uh, moderate uh, pseudophacodonosis, we do not be alarmed. So, no, there is nothing to be alarmed about. Yeah, as long as the patient is not complaining, he doesn't usually complain. No, no, they were, none of them complain about this. And second, if we have a situation where we want to remove the no. retinal if, if we have got into a situation, hold the lens hold firmly it. on the center and, and with the cannula, press on one of the longer limbs of the claw and push it in on the back. Generally, it loses its tension and you can free the, uh, you, you can free the lens from the iris and, and bring it uh, to the front. Second is, if you find this difficult, hold the lens uh, with the uh, Clavin forceps and introduce a very thin Warner scissor, cut the haptic, and you can bring out the lens very easily. So it's not, a, it's not difficult. You, you just have to sacrifice the lens. Uh, there is one of the common comments which we see uh, on the podium, like, you know, many people just say that, you know, you're enclaving the iris pigment epithelium and this is the reason it's going to cause a lot of cystoid macular edema and uh, they uh, accuse because it's in close proximity or hugging the iris. Uh, they feel that, you know, it is going, it is responsible for causing cystoid macular edema. Uh, well, uh, I want to know the experience of all the panelists here who have used uh, uh, these lenses for decades. Uh, in an uncomplicated scenario where vitreous is not the cause, you've done a nice vitrectomy and just the lens is there. Uh, what is your experience as far as the incidence of CME is concerned? Because this is one of the common fears which has been thrust upon the mind of the, uh, uh, the surgeons. Uh, I would say that, you see, you can't see where they have passed the sutures through the ciliary body. 
and skeptics are all, always going to be there you know i i have been facing these questions for the past 35 years this lens fixed either in front or at the back of the iris does not cause cme and as um as the uh, the reference of dr swignesh also met, uh, mentions that it is the sum total of the patient situation which can cause cme right uh, still fixated lenses how much they mess with the ciliary body nobody knows because you can't see it out of sight out of mind now this is visible to them and everybody is talking about it when they make two or three or four holes in the in, in the ciliary body and the sclera why don't they talk about it what, what is it about that that they like and they hate about this a uh, extremely valid point uh, dr ms sir sir i don't think you have experience any cme with these lenses uh, absolutely no cme we reviewed after uh, this question came up uh, last time in one of the meetings we reviewed all our uh, you know cases and uh, there's no incidence of uh, cme i mean the other causes which indicated the uh, the you know the implantation of iris claw lens if they manage well like doing a bit good vitrectomy and seeing that the inter you know vitreous is not connected not only to the wound but inside also it should not be connected to the iris claw lens itself uh, i mean we we have no increased incidence of cme when compared to any other uh, series of patients so uh, cme attributable to the see the weight of uh, this lens is around 12 13 14 grams in air in the aqueous in the fluid it's going to be even lesser because of buoyancy it is hardly any weight you don't see it uh, you know hanging on it's not a heavy thing that's lying down and of course uh, the iris is attached 360 degrees so when you are attaching a, a scleral fixated lens it attached at two places so this is uh, through the tissue of iris the attachment is a natural attachment to the scleral spur all around so uh, the distribution of weight on the uh, thing is hardly anything and uh, what i do is uh, after anyway the stormy surgery is managed by an iris claw lens and then i would uh, use the post operative drops steroid i'll stop it in a one month like any other case but flurbiprofen is my favorite medicine in all these difficult cases i continue twice a day for 3 to 4 months time so i have not seen any cme at all clinically we are not done ocd studies because nobody had uh, defective vision uh, explainable to uh, the uh, you know possibility of cme in these patients i have not done ocd but then clinically there is no increased ev evidence dr malikarjun uh, i uh, you mentioned i think you didn't have any uh, uh, raised incidence of cme in your series large series dr kiranji sir can you just get your video ready to demonstrate iris uh, uh, anterior inflammation iris uh, Doctor, Malik, uh, I didn't get your question, Doctor. Uh, just Sister McLeary, ma, you have got a large series. Uh, you yeah. also have see, any? See, uh, see the planned surgery where uh, Doctor uh, M.S. Ravindra, Doctor uh, uh, Ranveer Singh were uh, discussing. If there is a good vitrectomy and uh, uh, you have implanted uh, the iris claw lens properly, we I we never think of uh, Sister McLeary, ma. I mean, it doesn't come to in our mind that. Uh, yeah, that uh, there will be increase in the cystic macular edema or something but if the, if it is something uh, if the uh, etiol uh, indication is something different like traumatic cataract or a, a pediatric uh, uh, then definitely it is as good as a regular uh, Uh, Dr. Pradeep Reddy has a question for the panelist. He is asking where convex surface of retrofixated IOL should be. Uh, he is he is referring to something difference between concave curvature facing anterior versus posterior in retrofixated iris claw lens. Dr. Ravi, uh, Ravi ji, yeah, yeah. Actually, you can implant the lens either way. I I generally prefer implanting the convexity forwards, but you can, but you can implant it on the back also. uh i i implant i use plano convex lenses if i turn the convexity backwards i have to adjust a little bit for the biometry for half adapter because of the convexity going back otherwise both ways it's the same i've implanted a few vaulted uh lenses with the convexity backwards 
and uh, again the only change that you have to make is a little bit adjustment in the in the biometry otherwise it doesn't make any difference which company indian company lenses do you use for retrofixation and do we need to order like you know uh, by concave or plano concave how do you order them generally all of them make plano convex lenses okay right so so the vaulted lenses uh, i'm not aware who is making them on a regular basis because the vaulted rs claw lens was initially used for fakeic implantation not for a fakeic because they you don't need the vault so all of the indian companies which make iris claw lens all of them are equally good all of them are good but the only thing that you make sure is buy one lens from them open it and try the strength of the claw if you think the strength of the claw is correct buy that claw if it is too hard or too soft tell them to make it make it uh, right and then you buy it from them don't just buy all the lenses from them thank you uh, dr kiran ji you know we most of us are used to the retro fixation of iris iris we uh, the lenses we don't use anterior fixation much actually so i am fascinated by how you thread the iris into the claws actually just actually show us in a quick video like you know share some few practical tips there most of us are worried about you know the uh, dropping the lens back and you know, if we are able to uh, fix it the anterior claw lens bigness would find it much more easier please share your uh, uh, tips on that okay um so i have i think already told that uh, for the bigness they should be passing the suture through one of the claws so that the lens doesn't fall down now coming to the anterior fixation actually please heel on for this purpose because it gets washed out easily and doesn't cause cause any reaction in the eye post operatively so i gave a small incision if the breadth of the lens is 3 mm uh, it is enough for me to slip in the lens in the anterior chamber so under the uh, heel on i slip the lens vertically then i make it horizontal this is mac macpherson forceps horizontal macpherson forceps so i have i'm showing it in slow mo because that saves time for me or that which is passing through the claw taking along the iris and i'm taking care that the tip doesn't injure the iris that blood is from the incision line so i think the other side is going to be little clearer so i am holding the lens with a vertical forceps so there goes the needle 26 gauge needle and i use a straight needle i don't bend it so i engage the iris and i pass a little thread into the claw then with the back of the iris or the shaft of uh, back of the uh, needle or the shaft or the uh, needle i pass more more iris in the claw this is the first time it has never happened perforation of the iris has never happened and this is actually a micro movement of the iris if you do a gross movement of the iris that is going to injure the root of the iris that is going to cause bleeding so it has to be very micro movement it should not be a macro movement because in our learning from the iris root that is no, there a no way to choose it, it? just the, the 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 size of the eye is going to give you an impression that i need this type of lens we have lenses 7.2 mm in length into 4.5 mm breadth then we have 6 mm into 3.5 mm then we have lenses 4 mm into 2.5 mm for for micro cornea so the smaller the uh, eye is the smaller the choice for the lens is going to be uh, there is a question for dr ravi ji dr adio is asking where does the convex part of the iol face when enclavating is it the retina side no the convex uh, side of the iol face is the front any question on that and uh, yes 
there is a question by dr jagannath buramani which company makes lenses uh, which give marks in the optic dr msr sir i think you had shown this uh, clip yes i think any company can make it it's a pm lens it is very small but now it is stop making it if you withdraw the lens towards the uh, side which is uh, not being enclaved uh, then you can see the roots of the or pillars of the haptic and uh, then gradually take it towards as many lenses can all companies can make that lens uh, there is another question here uh, the ideal way of placing the side ports to tuck the iris claw dr ravi singh sir you told that you could you make only one side port on the right side and you make three or two on the other side uh, just share uh, the some practical tips on what is the right way of making these side ports uh, do they have to be limbal clear corneal or slightly sclerer actually they are more or less uh, limbal only uh, but these these side ports i made uh, the size is 0.6 mm that's the size of the diamond knife that i have and these side ports should be made radially not in any other direction because if 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 the direction is different once you take your cannula in and then you turn it you will again make folds in the cornea so i make one on the right for the first enclavation then depending on where the that enclavation has taken place i let the left claw of the lens rest on the iris so that it faces the three uh, paracentesis openings on the other side then depending on which paracentesis opening offers me the best centration i choose that and enclave the lens on the left side so you mean radial i didn't get the word radial do you mean how do you mean radial uh, stab incision there? radial in, in the sense that that the direction of the knife should face to the center of the pupil it should not face uh, low uh, downwards or upwards because if the and and second is the length of the paracentesis incision should not be very long if the length is long and you when you pass your cannula through it again you're going to cause folds i think that's an excellent point the the, the track should be small yeah yes right one more uh... yeah, go ahead malika go ahead uh one more uh, 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 beginners they will have a difficulty whether uh, with after in enclavating both sides whether it has been enclavated or not how to confirm it before taking out the grip that is a because they always they will have if i leave, if i leave that grip it may go down so what you have to do is gently push slowly down once down and see both side of the iris the both side of the iris you will see the dip need and i i the iris also moves along the uh the uh, when once you push it down iris also moves both sides so if it is not enclavated one, one side you won't you won't see that resistance that side so that's how again you have to take it out on the anti chamber and uh, actually in the in the beginning uh, you are a little skeptical as, as to whether the lens is fixed properly or not after uh, after you've done a few cases uh the feel of the hand is in the in your fingers is you know that you've fixed it well and 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 if there is a trans iris fixation, then there is no question of bad fixation. So it's just for the beginning five or ten cases that you need to confirm. Otherwise, there's no problem. Yeah, uh, but, uh, the uh, these lenses are not uh, very expensive. The best is to uh, take it, use it under microscope. Take a very thin cloth, maybe a transparent, uh, very thin cloth, muslin cloth or something like that, and try to enclave it. So before I started using the twenty-seven gauge cannula, everybody were trying to see so the picking is with a sharp needle, either a sinkhole or a needle, as he said. But uh, while you are putting retro, retro, uh, you know, lenses, you have to actually push the iris downwards. So people were using sinkhole at that time. So I said, why not use a cannula? You know, sinkhole has no, you know, role at all to play when you want to push it. So a very fine cannula really uh, changed the game. There is no iris damage at all. Before that, the hook used to damage the iris. The way I was doing it uh, when I started doing it, but the uh, cannula, when you push it down, and uh, you know it's very smooth. And uh, you know when you're pushing it down, at that point, see that the lens is in the center. If the lens is eccentrically, I mean you will have an eccentric lens. Lens, mind that you bring the lens to the center, and don't do anything except a vertical movement. With the cannula downwards, so there is no lateral movement at all. So 
So this is very important to ensure that the lens is centered well. The what I do is when I make the uh, Ravijit said a beautiful way of uh, having the option of three. What I do is when I do the side side port, when I create a side, I create one side port and keep the length of the MBR across the cornea. If that's the cornea, I keep it across the cornea. Even if it's slightly eccentrically is there like that, you can immediately know you're not exactly opposite. By looking at the cornea is divided by the instrument into half and half, exactly at that point, I'm going to make another one so that the two ends of the entries are at the same long meridian, longest chord of the eye, that is the diameter. Yeah, so actually, I, actually, actually, I make the paracentesis openings in the beginning because after you have uh, made the main incision and uh, and if the eye becomes soft, it is little difficult to make the new paracentesis openings. That is why I make them in the beginning only. Uh, in a planned surgery, you can, but most of us, you know, like when there is a problem during surgery, yeah, of, course, the time, of course, of course, of uh, course. Then you have to form the chamber and then make it a little firm and then uh, do the. Uh, That's entry. right. I agree with you. The, can I make, make a the comment? Mm. shorter? The, I've explained it. I don't know whether it was clear. If uh, that is the cornea, if that's the cornea, and there are various ways you can take the, the uh, direction of the MBR. If you take the MBR in that direction, it's going to be a long one. If you take in that direction, it's even long. But if you take it down there, not only it's towards the center, but also towards the center of the people, down like that. So you'll have a very short uh, the uh, length of the tunnel. And... Uh, you know, when you pass the, uh, you know, the uh, cannula there, when you're passing it like this, there are no folds in the cornea. So this is not only you go medially to the center, but also downwards as you're creating the MBR. This one has helped me to avoid the wrinkling of the cornea when you're actually, uh, you know, passing the cannula onto the iris. Uh, one, one more question, Dr. Ravjit. What are your tips to minimize the ovalization of the uh, pupil? Dr. MSR sir, touched, touched on it a few times. Uh, please share your thoughts on it. Uh, ovalization would, would occur if the size of the lens is big and the eye is small. If, you're, if your lens, if you choose the lens on the smaller side, you will never have any ovalization. Never. And you have to try to fix the lens just outside the call rate. If you, if you claw the lens on the call rate or inside it, you're bound to have ovalization. Is PI necessary okay. in all iris claw lenses? One of the questions. Uh, uh, I always do a very small PI. I don't want to take any chances with it. Uh, Dr. Deepak, uh, regarding uh, doing paracentesis in the hypotonus eye, see, one more thing what you can do is... Uh, uh, at the site of paracentesis, you will give a counter pressure at the same side. You take a, a colibri or a uh, hold the uh, conjunctive at that side only. One side you pull it and make a paracentesis so that uh, it will not you will not have the much of the folds there. I think. Yeah. I think that's an uh, excellent point. Uh, anybody has any more questions? I have a question to Dr. Ravi Jit. Please, sir. In a normal eye, Dr. Ravi uh, and Kiran, in a normal eye, everything is normal. No micro, no myelo. And what is the ideal size of the optic size and the overall length of the uh, iris claw lens that you would prefer to fix it on the back of the iris? 7.25 multiplied by 4.5. 4.5 optic size, 7.25 is the overall length. Uh, what is the advantage, disadvantage of a smaller and uh, uh, larger than that? No, uh, in, a, in a normal sized eye, uh, this, this lens looks perfectly good. The size of the optic is good. Everything is fine. The moment you start making the lens bigger, mobilization and other problems will creep in. You can implant a smaller lens in a big eye without any mobilization. But if you implant a bigger lens in a small eye, you'll definitely have a ovalization. Fine. The second point is because of the standard PC lenses are all six millimeter optical size. When you suggest a 4.5, will they have any night vision problems like late while driving? Because people is going to go beyond the, uh, the edge of the lens. You see, most of the lens implants, uh, the, the retro fixated or the interior fixated iris claw lenses are done in, in, in patients who are 
having who the, in which there are situations are challenging sure. for them it really doesn't make that much of a difference sure. and and you know even in the posterior ch uh, chamber lens almost half a millimeter on either side is covered by the capsule so yes, the effective uh, optic in that case is also 4.5 millimeters only. Uh, sir, what are the, sir, what are the complications question. you have seen? Like last year with uh, your expertise of 40 years of uh, so many decades of use. Today, what are the uh, complications that you would see? The older complications, will let us uh, forget about them. Will you believe me? Huh. <laughs> Zero. I would believe you. Zero. Okay, good. Great. Sir, Ravji, sir, I have one question for you, sir. Yes. Uh, you don't prefer biconvex lens because uh, many companies are making biconvex lenses now. Because uh, really making biconvex Aristla lenses? Yes, sir. It doesn't make any difference. Yes, yes. Because it doesn't what, really make what any what difference. What you're using is a biconvex. It's, I mean... Which company are you using, Malikarjun? Uh, it's Excellence. 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 Okay. And they make only biconvex or they have a plano convex? No, they can also? make. They, 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 if you want to feed into that machine, I think we'll get the right IL calculated. So I, I, for, for the interior fixated RS claw lens, we use an A constant of 115.5. And for the posterior fixated, we use it 117. So that works. We calculated the uh, A constant of our series. It came to around 117.4. But uh, the lenses I used have got an angulation, uh, mild angulation. Like uh, uh, if the angulation is, backwards, but my uh, why I prefer them is optic is little behind the iris plane. Uh, I'm yeah, exactly. probably there so, is. So, so with the lens that we use, plano convex with the convexity forwards, 117 does the job. So if if I have to if I implant a lens with convexity backwards, then I add half adapter to that. It comes to one one seven point five. Yeah. Correct. That that, that uh, you know that's what our calculation. Uh, he has shown me his entire PowerPoint presentation. Uh, how the trade can you know the uh, the supplies that we get can be uh, can be so erratic, and that can be the cause of failures during surgery, like creation of task, creation of endophthalmia. You should update yeah. it now. Actually, things have become better now as uh, than, than what they were many years back. Uh, uh, you have much better standards of fluids which are coming, much better. Uh, we are using disposable cassettes for uh, cataract surgery. Uh, our our uh, sterilization standards are much better. We have better indicators. You know, we are much better equipped now and much with much better under, uh, understanding now than we had 20, 30 years ago. So the problems are few, but uh, eye surgery is, 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 is a unique kind of surgery in which so many cases are operated at the same time and we end up using, reusing some of the hand pieces, some of the tips, some of such things, which if goes bad, can cause multiple problems in multiple patients. Yes, especially especially in, in our Indian setting or other third world country settings. If you change every Next thing I should definitely ask you is uh, like, uh, you know, when Daljit Singh was around, it was an aura. It was the way uh, innovations are seen everywhere. It are kept in place. There are hundred points you can pick it up every day. So, uh, how do you uh, feel the absence of Dajit Singh? The same uh, drive, the same uh, you know motivation, the same innovations are continuing there. So, uh, there there is so much that we are learning every day and incorporating uh, in our daily use, and there is so much from the past also that we are using. For example, stainless steel sutures. We just can't live without them. Mm -hmm. Iris claw lenses. I can't think of a cataract OT without iris claw lenses to back us up. So, so you know, these are the things which we have got inculcated into our system. More important than finishing it in five minutes less. So, you know, many years ago, a person from AMOE came to me, said, uh, 
so we have introduced this FACO machine. This machine does surgeries faster than the older machines. And if you start using this, you'll be able to go back to your home much earlier. He doesn't know doctors are so stupid. If they can do something quickly, they will add five more cases to their list. <laughs> so uh, it's not that important to do it fast. You must enjoy. Which is very close to my heart. Sure, sure, please. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and there was a full and there was. There was cataract and vitreous was also uh, mixed with the cataract. So she came to me three days later. I uh, told the anesthetist to just uh, uh, prepare the patient for immediate uh, repair. So I took the RS hooks. Uh, I, um, first I did, did some uh, suturing of the cornea. Then you can cornea. And from the very next day, she was advised to start playing video games with plus 10 diapters of spectacles, keeping the other eye closed. So she was doing, uh, playing these video games for the next one month. And um, after a month, I implanted this lens. Uh, and you can see the amount of iris ha I have put in the eye. And after 24 years, 21 years, now she is uh, 25 years around, around for, uh, 25 years. And presently she has a needle or a knife or a scissors. So it has a role in such children also. So that, that is what, uh, and the eyes perfectly straight. It, it has not gone divergent or convergent. It's perfectly straight. And she's using those uh, big sized corneal scleros uh, contact lenses. And our vision is six by six. This is wanted to wanted to share with you. Thank you, Dr. Kiranji, sir. That was uh, uh, immense popularity uh, among the people. They want to learn. There's a question here asking Dr. Ravijit, uh, do you have fellowships or training programs for Iris? Well, Pro we don't uh, run a formal training for Iris Pro Lens, but you know, it's a pleasure if somebody has to wants to learn. Okay. We'll definitely teach him. No problem. And, uh, you know, I, I say that uh, my, my um, tryst with Iris Claw lenses started when I was in school with my father. And he started making these lenses by first started making the, the raw material. The raw material was monomer, which he collected from a, a friend, a dentist friend's office. So first we used to make a polymer out of that uh, plastic or PMMA, then uh, uh, make the lenses out of it. And the, the lens that you saw, which was dislocated in one, in one of the videos that I showed was probably made by me only 25 years ago. Wow. So, <laughs> so I, um, I think I may have uh, my, my mother, my father and me, we may have made like 50, 60,000 lenses with their own bare mouth and try to pass it through the claws. You can either do, do that or you can take, uh, you can shred a piece of cotton and try to do the, doing the same uh, through, through the claw. And this is the only way to learn it. You have to hold the lens firmly, gently yet firmly. Number two, you have to stabilize your, your your hand which holds the lens so that it doesn't move and then with very gentle stroke of the right hand you have to enclave the iris whether you have to do it on the ears this person sit on those tired machine and you will not fall you know it is you get you this is experience this is training so similarly before you try it in the eye you must break 10 15 20 30 lenses be absolutely confident uh, in handling the lens. And then when you try to implant in the eye, you'll have no problem. I can assure you that. And these, these lenses, as Dr. Ravindra said, they're so cheap. You won't even believe 
uh, if somebody tells you how cheap these lenses are and they are they are you know value for money they are gold yeah they they're, they're worth every Three. Come to what I do is I do not pass the needle like that to separate them. I just move one of them. See that it's moving. Then don't pass the inside that. If exactly. you are passing inside the tensile so, strength. So the the the, the plastic yeah the plastic memory. Uh, you'll see that uh, there are strain lines which appear at the end of the uh, haptic. So okay. you should not pass it pass it too many times. That's right. Even when it's inside the eye, see if you are pressing instead of there. If you are pressing this one, there is a chance that it may not hold the iris well. So if you pass exactly at the slit there, I mean it will keep the strength of holding the iris. So, so this actually, is there, one thing. There are two technologies to make PMMA lenses. One is by lathe cut, lathe machine, and the other is by compression molding. The lenses which are made by compression molding, they are the ones which used to be made by Optech and which uh, Dr. Dalit Singh also used to make with. these lenses will have very flexible haptics but the lenses which are made by lathe will have stiff stiff haptic it will, it will have a uniform uh, tensile strength so you could you could measure that uh, with a with a micrometer and uh, you should be happy with that 0.17 or 0.18 mm uh, do we have any more questions here Dr. Ravi and Dr. Kiran, is it possible to make an opaque uh, uh, iris claw lens, like of for course. example? Of course, uh, the same to make these uh, uh, these kind of lenses, which were opaque, uh, to uh, to be implanted in patients who had diplopia. Okay. And also, they used to make these lenses in for albino albino patients. So it had it was an opaque lens with a small opening in the middle, which had uh, a transparent optic. We used a few of these lenses in in albinos. but uh, after a little while the optic would come out you know the, the haptic would stay there and the optic would slip out so it wasn't fixed properly after that we never used them the other thing is if in a pediatric patient you implanted lot of them how many how often you change the lens you remove the lens and put it correct like the the, the there is a progress Implanted lens. It's, it's a regular thing, routine thing. What about uh, have you? Do you implant toric eyewells? Toric iris. No, we haven't implanted any toric eyewells. Whereas uh, Optex sells um, toric eyewells also, but they're not available here. Okay, good. I think it's a very, very, very uh, you know really, uh, fruitful day for all of us to have discussed you know, iris claw lenses and. I I think these are the ones which are most practical. Are using don't want to speak. Correct. That is the issue because they don't want to get the backlash of somebody saying, "What are you doing?" You know. So, so that is the only thing. Gradually and slowly and gradually, I've been speaking about these lenses for almost thirty-five years now, and uh, people are picking. At the moment, there is no replacement in sight. Uh, thank you. On, on small, uh, uh, there is a tendency in uh, Israel and many of the uh, countries, developed countries, instead of using iris claw, they suture the uh, eye wall to the iris. So, okay. you're right. On the back. Why do you want to go through with all those sutures and knots and everything? when you can when you can do it the easy way why to catch the ear from the other side when you, when you can catch it with the other hand yeah i just wanted that message to be conveyed through you <laughs> small comment uh, the where i am sitting here it's the south india south uh, i mean south karnataka we just now 20 minutes back we had a earthquake here is it and uh, i was unmoved because i was so much uh, involved in the discussion that i was unmoved my wife and all they came what were doing here there is a quick outside just there are, there were a lot of sh shakes i could uh, uh, appreciate but uh, <laughs> because i was so much involved in <laughs> discussion you can read this in, in the tomorrow morning the news <laughs> i am very pleased to uh, uh, participate in this uh, you know, thank when you everybody, when everybody when everybody is interested everybody we have been doing it for almost 35 plus years 
so, so it it feels good when you can transfer what you know to other uh, doctors who who wish to start this who wish to do that and uh, dr malik arjun showed some beautiful videos uh, video a beautiful video and beautiful cases that he had done and that's the way to go you have to realize the full potential of potential of the iris claw lens and the the possibilities are endless limitless with this lens so i was actually joking you know my uh, when we operated upon my father for cataract one eye operated and the other eye dr kiran operated i said no. but we had the privilege of inviting dr ranjit singh uh, and gave him the gold medal oration in uh, you know in uh, bangalore after mix society that's a yeah. dream come true for us such a simple humble man straight forward he does not hesitate to express what he thinks is right so many things and it is said that he was he was a first person who took stereo photographs using a nikon camera nikon or canon i'm not sure on this little lamp and yeah, the the the, so the, the first time he started taking was uh, with a camera that he actually he was fascinated with 3d photography right from the beginning yeah. Yeah. and i still have his collections of cameras there are 32 in all, all from the small smallest to the biggest the so lamp you know that's got the port and they yeah. got hold of uh, is it canon or nikon i'm not sure it's it's uh, uh, nikon, nikon camera if you know nikon nikon so nikon people came to his place saw this little lamp and adopted the nikon camera to suit that see the, yeah. the engineers from there came you can have a beautiful 3d uh, picture with a still yeah. camera his uh, photographs uh, we used to post on asian ophthalmology that really inspired me to take up uh, anti segment photography you know that all the great goes to him because and he continued to take good photos even with his phone Had amazing photographs with the camera phone itself, yeah. and he was one of the main inspiration for me to take up anti segment photography. Well, so and, you, know, and, and you are doing that so well. Yes. Oh. The other thing I should like to tell is uh, the way he was examining patients. There's a queue of patients, about hundred people standing in a queue. He takes one or two minutes to see a patient. Within that time, he examines. There are two. takes so if the patient has to get up himself it takes time and all is done in a minute or two everything it's a dream i've never seen such uh, you know organized person like daljit okay i think nobody wants to <laughs> at the time at this time of lot. the late evening to be with all of us and thank you for listening to whatever we had to say whatever we we had to share sir sorry i know it's kind of late but i just wanted to know if uh, like there's a there's no capsular support or uh, uh, it's not a matter of going quickly or not you just have to do it right you have to hold the lens firmly so that it doesn't drop back it doesn't slip and you just you, it's it's you know it's like you are crossing a deep cliff uh, Uh, with a ladder uh, you should not see down you should not see down you must make sure you are stable you should pass it in zero suture through one of the haptics of the lens and let, let it uh, yeah, stay okay. outside so even if you drop the lens you can always pull it out okay okay thank you so much sir thank you are there any more questions around we still have around 70 people still logged in it's 11 now uh, still 70 people are no the the iris will not go through unless okay. the needle goes through so the the needle goes through and then you bring the needle out i, I can i can show you, i can share that video once again yeah um, maybe you know just just give me a moment i would uh, like to show it here okay can charge the
Uh, maybe you could see the other side also. Thank you. See, the trick is uh, you'll have to go down to push the iris, and when you remove it, don't come back. Yeah. Draw it out of the eye. Exactly. Draw it out of the eye. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Kiran, I should thank you because it all started with you. you is said, it? Uh, I didn't know you that. <laughs> you, 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 know you, that. Uh, it started with him. You, he sent a message to me with his special, uh, uh, you know, the uh, opaque uh, segment uh, video. Then I asked him, why don't you present this? In our meeting, and he readily accepted. And he <laughs> said, "He said that let us do it along with Ravi." So that's why both of you are here. You know, I'm. I'm okay. Ravindran called Ravi more. Ravi, Ruby doesn't come out of the port. Kiran, we always see. Yeah, that's true. We want to see Ravi. Is that Doctor Saha? Yes, <laughs> Ravi. Thanks a lot after a long time. Yeah. And lovely, but you have stopped coming out. Yes. Yeah, we would want to see you more, sir. Definitely. Uh, I accept sure. compliments. Uh, we want to see Ravi, that is one. And to carry forward SAR's mission, you must put on regular something, something, somewhere, somewhere. You choose your area where you want to post your things. You have so much of material and so much of teaching. That's right. So carry SAR's flag higher and higher. Thank you, Roksha. I think we always love to because we see Kiran quite often, but I am seeing you after I think ages. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. at least post there, we will we'll be elated. Like sure. this, you are not out of your port, but we are seeing you. But yeah. Dr. Zaha, you are nowhere, nowhere. An ophthalmology that uh, carry forward Sir's dream, and he was the best educator. I think uh, it'll be very, very, uh, you know, fruitful meeting. I think we can yes. end it, Dr. Deepak. Yeah, yes, Dr. Dev, Dr. Dev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, it's, it's... Hi, Singhuji. Uh, I opened up my video just to meet you. I will <laughs> 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 This is from the chief, this is the chief scientist of the vaccine, uh, vaccine. <laughs> Uh, I remember sir. one. Like I said, I'm going by car. You have a driver, but no, sir, I'm driving my own car. Said, okay, wait a minute. I'll tell you something. So then he said, the two ultimate luxuries on the face of this earth are to be able to drive your own car and live on the ground floor of your own house. <laughs> And the second one was to be able to live on the ground floor of your own house. Jee Singh gave his talk and uh, I remember the audience was very aggressive in that hall. Well, it appeared as if some, some of them might eat him up. And, uh, but he held his ground and he spoke very smoothly, <laughs> con confidently, very short sentences, spoke very little, but conveyed everything. And, and uh, then somebody said, any questions? Everybody is saying, but I have another comment to make. 
Lens may be worst thing, but there couldn't be a better thing. <laughs> <laughs> so after the after that uh, session, uh, Dr. Dilji Singh came up, saw my tag, Acha Taliwal from Naba. I said yes, sir. Uh, that was a nice comment you made. How did you? How did it occur to you? I said, sir, I just couldn't take it. <laughs> Uh, sir, sir came to AIMS as a national workshop. Mesmerized to see that uh, fantastic, I think, short time surgery and taking out the lens from that bottles and putting it in. And I was assisting him, I mean, second assistant, he had his own assistant. And while he was give, going out, he gave me a bunch of the sutures. And I think 20 years I kept them for a long time, but then sitting houses somewhere I missed it. And I had so much of memory with him, uh, innumerable, <laughs> this place, but he's always inside, always with me. And I think I was the only one, Rabijit may remember, it yeah, was 2006 yeah. uh, or sometime like yeah, that. You stayed with us for many days. I came. Uh, I, I, I came to a meeting in Amritsar. I stayed in a hotel. Uh, I called him because wherever I am, we had a regular talk with him uh, by phone, by net or whatever. Then he came to my morning OT, uh, the hotel. Uh, what are you doing? Pack it up. I don't know if you are here. No, no, I will get you. I will get you. Pack it up. He, <laughs> from there, took me to his home and I was his another son and uh, I was assistant to Ravi's wife uh, because my interest primarily is retina, so whatever. So we had a very good time and Ravi showed me every, everything, the farmhouse, this and that. Uh, so it was a very, very memorable time for me. I think it was about two weeks or nearing that. About 15 days. Yeah. After two days, it became two weeks, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm telling. So that's the best time we sat. All the conferences, we are together. But uh, in his house, in his OT, in his leisure, uh, means it is really kind of a hero worshipping at its best. In the morning, he... All the meetings in wherever we have met, where all those things and so many things uh, means it's innumerable. And uh, what should I say? The Sony had a, a camera which had a macro. Now it is called the mobiles uh, have it. That macro had very good photography. So I had one, I used to put photos from there and I showed him also. Then, but that time he removed that, that particular model and they removed that particular feature. Then he was searching from the old phones. I said, sir, in my old phone, so this is gone. This, this is not that good. So who knows, you will spend that money and you'll never know that you'll get a good one or not. So that was the enthusiasm. And I am the only one, I think, uh, I did that to uh, glaucoma surgery <laughs> with under him. So great. And uh, we will we'll learn it. Sure. Uh, sure. Nowhere in India, so much of clinical data. I have traveled everywhere. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Dr. Dev. He might, might have left, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I would like to, I, I, on behalf of the Karnataka. Yeah, well. uh, Dr. Dev? Yeah, your network one. Are you on? Uh, I am on, but there's some network yeah, issues, so no, you can edit it. Please go ahead. Yeah. 
I would, on behalf of Karnataka's just, uh, chapter of the ISMSSIs, I would like to thank the experience for all of us. Thank you, Dr. Kiranji, Dr. Ravi, and for enlightening us about this thing. And it has been one of the most uh, appreciated and most widely attended meetings of our weekly meetings. We have every week meeting, and this was a session dedicated to Iris Claw Lens. And thank you so much for sharing your time and uh, your tips and your experience, which is incomparable. Both of you have done uh, these lenses, use these lenses for decades. And uh, my thoughts will be echoed by most of us here. I'd also like to thank uh, Ravindra sir and Malik Ajun to contribute in this and share their experience. And at the end, also all the delegates who are up there until now, almost it's 11.30. Thank you so much. And Dr. Kiranjit and Dr. Ravi, uh, be prepared to uh, attend one more meeting, maybe a few months down the line. Okay. Good Thanks, Dr. Saha. Nice appearance. Sir, my pleasure. <laughs>